How familiar were you with the character from the comic books when you took the role? Uh, before I actually started talking about the role, I didn't know the character from the comics very well. I knew the character from the Teen Titans cartoon Teen show yeah, yeah, man. back in the early 2000s. Now, once I got the, well, once uh, we started talking about it, I did my research and I saw the comic book version of the character was so different than the cartoon version. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, this guy is deep. I like this. There's, there's room to grow. There's room to play. You know, because my, my whole aesthetic is I, I like I like films that kind of have that have consequence. I like particularly superhero films that have you know grounded stories and something real. Because it, you know I, I remember watching these kind of movies and really like looking up to them as as kids and be like this is the this is a uh, this is a sort of like lesson on like how to deal with life. You know, and I feel like those things should not be sort of undermined by this by this idea of just like oh we're just going to get up and tell jokes. You know, it's not that's not that's not my particular aesthetic when it comes to that. Right. That's why when I was like. You know, Zach's doing this. Okay, his movies are dark. They've got consequence. They show superheroes in a in a in a complicated light, trying to work things out in their own lives. Like I'm there, man. Let, sign me up. Dean, you all were like, like it was like you've been working together for years and years. How did that come about? Did you guys like hang out a lot or? We did. Yeah, we took London by storm for sure. <laughs> Jason, Ezra, and myself. Um, but everybody was super welcoming. You know what I mean? And that trickled down from Zach and his crew because he works with a lot of the same people and almost it's almost like you're walking in a family you know they trust you to do your job and it's not there's no hierarchy between like the different characters i mean we all know batman we all know superman we all know wonder woman they're established characters but they're all still fairly new in this rendition of the universe you know there's the sort of um there's the ideal ver the idyllic version of these characters that's out there but i think with flash aquaman and cyborg it gave us some room to make our takes, our own, you know, on the characters because we haven't seen them in a sort of cinematic, uh, in a cinematic universe before. Right. You know, um, that and because the characters are all so different and they all bring their own skill set to the table, I mean, everybody sort of has their place, you know what I mean? Like cyber terrorism is one of the biggest threats around the world, you know? Superman can't beat that. Batman can't beat that. Wonder Woman can't beat that. You can't lasso a firewall. You can't, you know, punch, you can't punch the internet. You know, you can't do that. You know, Cyborg's the only person that can handle that sort of stuff. Um, you know, the same thing with The Flash. It's like, nobody can do what The Flash does. Nobody can do what Aquaman does. And that's why they're all such specific members of the team. I was wondering what your favorite part has been to get to play Cyborg? Like, favorite part of playing him has been so far? Uh, so far, my favorite part has been being able to explore the relationship between him and his father you know, and, uh, and his parents. You know, he loses his mother in the same accident that takes his body, which is a really tough thing to go through. And I think if anybody endured that kind of traumatic experience, you know, you'd be right on the cusp of, like, being, being a villain. And the idea that he doesn't go toward that side, he chooses to, he has such a good heart that he chooses to do what we would consider to be the right thing, even though life has thrown him such a crazy curveball. Um, really tells us that that's what makes him the hero. It's not the powers, it's like what you do with them. Um, and I know that can sound kind of cliche, but it's absolutely true. Uh, the relationship with his father, which I think there's a lot of ground to explore the healing process between Victor and his father, because before the accident, you know, Victor's father really didn't pay him any mind. He really just, you know, saw his son in an academic light. Uh, and in the Teen Titans, uh, the new Teen Titans original run of it, you know, Victor was born with a super superhuman IQ. Uh, super, super smart, and his dad was like, hey, listen, you know, you should go into science because that's what I'm interested in, and he's like, hey, listen, dad, I want to live my life the way I want to live it, and I think that's something that translates to all of us as human beings is living, our, living the life we want to live versus what other people say we should do with it, so I think that is one of the, the craziest and, and most interesting aspects to explore because that's what makes them human, you know? Yeah. It sounds like you personally relate to that a lot. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I think we, we all go through it at some point yeah. in time. I mean, we've got so many outside influences saying, do this, don't do that, do that, don't do this. In certain, in certain points in our lives, things are thrust upon us that sort of force us into one avenue or the other. But it's not about, you know, sort of getting down on yourself and, and, and sort of wallowing in it. It's about pulling yourself up and trying to make the best of the circumstances that are, that are, that are put before you, you know? Awesome. I awesome. just got the chills, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Good. That was good. <laughs> how was the end result versus your expectations of how you looked? Uh, I thought it was great. 
I really did. You know, when Zach told me, he was like, you know, I got this idea for Cyborg because he's born of the mother box technology. You know, he's going to have this like sort of twisted apocalyptic look to him, you know, and people are going to be like, is this guy like, is he on the good side? Is he on the bad side? Like, we don't, we don't know. Like, even he won't know because the technology sort of has the mind of its own. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's really cool. Like to, 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 to leave that little bit of doubt as to like what, what side this guy is going to go on, like where he's going to end up. I was like, man, this is this is storytelling. Like, I like that. What was it like when you got to see the final product for the first time? You know, I was I was I was happy, man. I was happy. I thought, you know, all, all things considered, with Cyborg, there was a lot of material that we didn't get to see with respect to Cyborg's backstory. But you know, I think that they that they did justice with what they could with respect to the character. I think uh, ultimately, you know, everybody put a lot of hard work into this thing, totally. and you know, there are a lot of decisions that get made that you know we don't necessarily have any control over with respect to that, but, um, you know, I feel like the integrity of the character was upheld. You know, we upheld it as best as we could. And I gotta know, I gotta know, because now that we all know and love Cyborg so much, the rumors are out there. Are we gonna get the standalone movie? See, I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I mean, I can't, I can't comment on that specifically, because they don't tell me anything until, like, the very last minute. I mean, I will say there's a, there's a ton of people making those kind of decisions yeah, behind the scenes. It. And, you know, it would be a very, very costly movie to make because it is so CGI heavy with Cyborg. Yeah. I, you know, I'm the only member of the league that's not in a practical costume. So, I mean, you're going to be looking at like $200 million just to make it. So, you know, it's one of those things you have to, you really have to take into consideration. You know, it's a numbers game for some people at the end of the day. I hear it, but I think they'll make that money back. Hey, listen, if we keep, if we keep making noise, you know, yeah. make it happen, man. It's about what the people want. And that's what, uh, and that's what people understand. That's what they recognize. Uh, when I walked out of the Justice League, um, you were the movie, the, the solo movie that I wanted to see next. So I really do hope that they create create a cyborg uh, solo film. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and if you have any advice about yeah. what we can do to help, you know, cheer that along, I'm happy to share it with other nerds on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. I mean, everybody worked incredibly hard, and I definitely think uh, Justice League is probably one of the more well, well-rounded well stories as far as, like, if you like Flash, you'll get enough of Flash to keep you satisfied. Aquaman, Wonder Woman, all of that. Um, I mean, the response to Cyborg was very, very heartwarming for me. And it was my pleasure to be able to bring a character sort of to the forefront who, you know, people didn't necessarily have as much of an, uh, an affiliation with prior to or as much knowledge of prior to. Um, as far as uh, uh, Cyborg continuing on, yes, he will continue on in some capacity. There's some talk that's going on right now about certain things, but I can't really divulge too much of that. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn or speak too soon. But um, I appreciate you saying so. And I think if, you know, people make enough noise, people will listen. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, these movies are about where people spend their money. And that's the best way. It's like, you know, it's like voting in a sense, right? It's, uh, once, once people sort of feel confident in that, they'll just move forward in that direction. But I appreciate your support. I really do. And it's a, it's a labor of love. So, and if this is all I'm blessed to do with respect to that, you know, I'm glad that it meant, uh, I'm glad it meant something to you. In your opinion, how do you think the reshoots might have changed the cyborg character and how that affected his dynamic? Because, like you said, in the trailers and the stuff we were seeing before, there was going to be a lot of backstory, and it seemed like it was going to be an integral part of the film. So my question is, you know, how do you think that affected the end result? Well, I mean, we're not finished just yet, so I don't know what the, how specific the end result is. But what I will say is, you know, Zach had very specific plans for Cyborg and of his trajectory. And he, Zach probably shot enough footage in the first film to make, like, two movies out of. Um, he had definitely, definitely had his whole, uh, uh, I think, I believe, a trilogy in mind with respect to Justice League. And, you know, if his vision had sort of been in, uh, been, had come to fruition... Cyborg would have been probably one of, if not the most powerful metahuman in the, in the entire canon, uh, in the film universe, you know, um, and that's one of the, uh, that's just one of the crazy things about Zack, is he can take someone who's like such a newcomer and evolve their powers to the point where, you know, Cyborg, Cyborg is like S tier, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, so do you have the Snyder cut or anything that we can see? Do I, do I have it? No, I don't. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's funny my, you ask. Funny you should say, I brought it on my own. Gotta try. My viewfinder here. No, I mean, I mean the, 
Zach's film, he shot everything that he wanted to shoot. I mean, it's, it's not a matter of whether or not it exists. It's a matter of whether or not uh, you know, we see it. But, no, it's, uh, I know people are sort of really hungry for that sort of thing. And you never know, maybe one day. I wanted to thank you for all the support you're showing for Zack Snyder and the Snyder Cut. It's nice to see that someone else wants it, too. Thank you, baby. Hey, there's nothing else I can do, man. I mean, I love Zach. I love Chris. I love everybody involved in the project. Um, thank you for saying so.